I was working on a project the other day when an idea popped into my head. What if I built the world's first gingerbread Iron Man mask? And all I can say is stay tuned because this is insane. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. This has been a lot of work. If you guys don't know, I actually have a TikTok and an Instagram account. And I also post on my YouTube shorts a little bit different content as well as mini clips on how I build this stuff. So make sure to go check that out. I've got a lot of content and a lot of cool things coming. I really appreciate you tuning into my long form YouTube content. I'm gonna be working on some more videos like this that I'm really excited about. I'm actually in the process of building an Iron Man suit, hence the weird mannequin back there. The suit didn't actually fit, so now he's just there. Anyway, I build a lot of stuff. And this is just a view of my collection. Christmas is one of my favorite seasons, and I had the idea, why don't I take something that I built and christmas -fy it? Yes, that's a word. Don't quote me, don't look it up, trust me. So that's what we're gonna do today. Hey, it's me again. So in order to do this, we need a 3D printer. So we're gonna 3D print the different files for the Iron Man mask, and I'm using a file from Levy 3D, which is Iron Man Mark 42's mask. That's because I'm actually building the Mark 42 suit and I was like, what better way than to build that Mark 42 mask as well? And I think it goes perfect with the idea that I have for the gingerbread mask, so let's do it. So I went ahead and uploaded all of the files into my slicer and then I printed them. And here they are. Okay, we got everything printed. Well, the back piece, the jaw piece, the face piece, the small pieces. I forgot to print the dome. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling extra merry today because if you 3D print and you build stuff, you know that the worst part about 3D printing is the sanding. Enough said, okay? Sanding and priming and sanding and priming is probably one of the worst things you can possibly do as a human being. The result is good, but is it ever good enough? <laughs> that was deep. What if you didn't have to sand it? All that to say, Robbie had an idea. When I was a little kid, bro, I was spray painting something that was spraying sand. And I know that sounds weird. I was not spraying sand. I was not spray painting like actual sand, but I was spray painting the concept of sand. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Anyway, I decided, you know, what if we spray paint this with some sort of texture on it that covers the lines? And then we spray paint over it with another color so it's like gingerbread and the exact same consistency no, that's for a taste. The exact same texture as a gingerbread cookie. Well, I got to work. By work, I meant I drove to Lowe's and I found something. This. Uh, you guys can see this, but I can in this moment. This is a voiceover, so I don't know what it's called, but you guys can see right now what it's called. And I decided, what if we spray that on top of this and it makes it look like kind of like, like a crusty cookie, right? I don't know why I said it like that. Sorry. Uh, like a nice cookie, like a nice non-crusty cookie. And then you spray paint brown on it, this color. I remember that. I remember this color, this is brown. It's like a satin brown, right? Let me know if I'm right. Editor Robbie here, you are right, buddy. You're right, buddy. So we spray that on top of the textured spray, and then it's boom. We got a gingerbread cookie Iron Man mask. Oh, I'm just happy you don't have to stand it. And I got the lights back here green. I'm feeling pretty merry. Let's go spray paint it. I also have to finish printing the other thing that I forgot, so I'm gonna do that. That's probably not gonna be filmed in this process because that, that's too much work. Let's go spray paint it. Okay, so after a long process of painting, we've officially got our first base done. As well as I went ahead and I printed like all the jaw pieces like this. that are gonna go on the inside right here. So far, I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. The texture on here just looks incredible. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And again, no layer lines, no sanding needed. So next up in this is we're gonna paint the gingerbread icing on top of this. So I went to the store and I bought a bag of puff paint. Let's put the icing on. We're gonna go ahead and start with the mask. Now because we've got a lot of these pieces white, I'm gonna do a little bit less white on the actual mask and a little bit more of the different colors like red and green, just because the whole jaw and everything is gonna be full of white and we don't wanna overdo that. So I'm doing these three for the puff paint, the red, green, and the yellow. And then if we need to, we can add more colors, but I kinda like this for now. Now for design wise, I actually have absolutely no idea. We're just gonna kinda go with the flow and hope we don't mess up. We're gonna mess up. All right, wish me luck. We're gonna do a a little practice on here. Okay. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Oh, I like that. Just do like a red accent. I think so. Boom. Oh, 
I'm gonna film with a different angle for Instagram, but I'll also put it on YouTube. I'm very pleased with how this turned out. I'm gonna let this dry. This is perfect, not too much, not too little. I think it's perfect. Now time for the ears. I'm just gonna do a swirly, just a, just a big, nice little swirly. So now we're getting to the jaw piece and I'm going to, I'm gonna outline this in red because as I said before, these white pieces are gonna sit on the inside just like that. And I kind of wanted there to be a little bit of ruffles but as well as some red right here. So we're gonna do ruffles and then red on the edges. Perfect. I think we did it. I think that's it. So we've got this one right here. We've got the ears back there. The jaw is placed right there looking good. The top of the dome over here as well as the face plate right here. So now all I have to do is probably wait a night, wake up tomorrow, see how they turn out, and then put it together. It's the next day and everything officially dried. So let me show you what we got. So this is the front face mask. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I didn't want it to be too much, so I think it's perfect. And then up here, we've got the swirlies. Looks, looks like frosting. I think it looks great. Then we've got the back piece. This one is actually upside down. So this is actually gonna be facing the other way like that. But I'm really happy with how that turned out as well, as well as the jaw piece just perfect then these are the two ears as well as all the small pieces so now that we've pretty much got that done the next step in doing all of this is to go ahead and put all the pieces together so i'm gonna go ahead and hot glue it and show you guys the process in that so let's do it so putting this together is very tedious you kind of have to glue in each of the pieces absolutely perfect so that when the helmet closes and all the mechanical pieces are in there it fits perfectly so this took about an hour but after it paid off completely and it ended up fitting just right so for this, I ended up using something called Loctite glue. Pretty insane how fast it works. Now we're just gonna make sure that the mask still fits on it right. Perfect. Looks good from this side, as well as this side, boom. I like that. So now that these pieces are finalized, we're gonna go ahead and connect this upper piece to the jaw. Now normally they're held together by magnets, but what we're gonna do is actually put the magnets in and then glue them permanently together. I've also seen some people solder them, but basically we don't need this to come on and off because we can just slide that over our head. So I'm gonna add the magnets in right now. And we'll see how it works. So as you can see here, we've got the magnets in one side. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the other piece and then glue them together. Okay, we've got this glued together. You can put it on easily just like that. The face plate should just sit calmly. Should just rest easy just like that. We also have to put these eye pieces in the eyes that literally just kind of snap in just like that to give it more of an icing touch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll start the wiring. The eyes have been put in. The mechanical parts just stopped printing. So let's go grab those. This thing is turning out insane. If you guys are enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment and like. If you want me to keep doing content like this, I really enjoy making this for you guys. It is so much fun. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the wiring of this all. Now, when it comes to wiring all this, I know it can sound a little bit scary, but I promise it's not that hard at all. We're gonna go ahead and take all of the supplies that we need, and I'll also link them in the description below. We're gonna do a simple Iron Man Arduino circuit. We're gonna have two servos, as well as two eyes and one button. One Arduino Nano and one battery pack. That's it. So we're going to go ahead and wire this. I'm going to follow this right here. I'm going to show it on the screen for you guys if you want to follow along, but I'm going to go ahead and wire it and explain everything that's in it. Let me know if you have any questions. Make sure to DM me on Instagram if you're confused about any of this. I'm here for you. Thank you guys so much. I'll be right back. 
All right, so we've pretty much got all that we need. We've got our Arduino Nano, as well as our LED lights, as well as our servos, our wires. We're gonna follow this wiring diagram. So the first thing that we need to do is connect all of the grounds. So let's do it. I'm gonna cut this right here. Boom, boom. So now we've got our ground, our positive, and then our other wire right here. And this wire is gonna plug into the Arduino in a certain pin, and it's gonna say, hey, power this servo by this wire. So we've got this one done. Let's go ahead and do this one. Let's connect the grounds of these two, just like this. Boom. And boom. The grounds are officially connected to here. So that's good. Let's connect the grounds here. And then connect these two grounds to here. Just like that. Boom. We're gonna take this blue wire for the ground for the button, just like this. Cut that up like that. I always like to have a little bit of extra wire for the button just in case it's in a hard to reach place, which it normally is. There we go, just like that. So now we're gonna go ahead and connect some extenders onto these wires. So for the red positive, I'm actually gonna use white because I'm out of red, unfortunately. But we don't need a ton. I'm thinking about that's enough, and then we can kind of cut this into four. So one, two, four. Now these servos are gonna connect just like this to the positive. And you connect this. Those lying around, so we're gonna use that. This is where it starts to get a little bit difficult because we've gotta somehow match all of these together without them interfering. So let's do this one first. We're gonna do one more for the Arduino. We're gonna go ahead and solder the negatives together. What you really wanna do is kind of just let it marinate on the inside and eventually, you don't wanna hold it on there for too long, but eventually it'll kind of just droop in there. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So if you guys are referring to the wiring diagram, only the servos positive, as well as the USB battery packs positive, plug in to the VIN pin on the Arduino Nano. So all we have to do is just combine the two, these two bad boys right here. Let's actually just combine all these. Why not? Ugh. Okay. So all of those are connected now. We're just gonna go ahead and take our soldering wire Okay, we're just gonna kind of heat this up again. Just kind of hold it on there. And then we're gonna slowly put in our wire, our soldering wire, and it's just gonna kind of melt within the cracks there and just form them both together. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to each of the pins right here. So the VIN pin, for example, and we're just gonna heat it up and then put a little bit of soldering wire on the end of it, just like that. And just go ahead and do that to all of them. So everything's officially wired. I uploaded the code for my computer. So everything's working fine. So when we plug this in, it will work. However, now we need to go ahead and put all of the hinges on the inside of here. These are pretty straightforward because you can just stick them on the end of your soldering iron and then just melt them on the inside of here. And they just slide right in just like that. This one is done. Now we're gonna do the insides of these masks. So the next step is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put these hinges on just like that. Okay, so we went ahead and we got actually everything put together. If you wanna check out how I did this, make sure to go check out my Instagram or my TikTok account. Those will be in the link in the description. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and put it all in the mask and hopefully it'll work. All right, so here's what it looks like right now. I'm gonna wait for it to drive probably like 30 seconds to a minute, and then we'll test it. We're gonna test and see if it works. Hopefully it's in the right place. Hopefully it doesn't fall apart on me. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, I fixed it. Whoops. Here we go. Gingerbread, mark one, test one. Test two. Now let's hog the eyes in. 
So I will link the code in the description, but I threw it into ChatGPT and made sure that the eyes stayed on when the mask opened so that it won't automatically turn off. And boom. All right, everyone, we are almost done building the world's first gingerbread Iron Man mask. It is the next day and all we have to do is finish some small things like putting a strap in the back as well as fixing the wire so that it's presentable. But other than that, I think we're almost done. So I'm gonna do that real quick and we're done. I believe it is done. The world's first real gingerbread Iron Man mask. Let me show you the inside very quickly. I'm able to take this off. These are connected by magnets. This is what we've got on the inside. Our button connects all the way down to here on my chin. So when I just click my chin, it opens. I've added Velcro up here for the battery pack so it can sit in there, as well as this strap right here just to keep it snug on my head. And with that, I think it's time to test it. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Test one. Oh my gosh. No way. <laughs> well, we did it, everyone. We built a gingerbread Iron Man mask. I am so proud of this thing. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, and let me know what you guys want to see next, and I'll see you in the next one.